never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. Probably heard of a um, the new movie called The Hobbit, which is the first book being filmed here in New Zealand. Well, they're actually going to uh, film back out on this location. I've signed up with the Alexanders just recently, as uh, some of the uh, construction of the set has started to take place. So you are very lucky to get to see that today, and you're also allowed to take photographs of the set being reconstructed. But please do not wander off anywhere. Do stay around my area as there's still construction going on around the set. Well, a plotter uh, is usually a woman, Women's Auxiliary Air Force, and they worked in the control rooms in Britain during the Second World War. Oh, yep, I've got you now. Yes, and ah. they would control the movements of the different squadrons in response to the ra see, radar say, signals. I can say something to that, see, you know, all these people that get up there and run these businesses, but there's always a strong woman behind it, eh, to make sure everything's done right. It sure is. There is, isn't there? Absolutely. See, the war, it was won because there was women in behind the background there getting things right. sorted. That's it's right. Just, it's all plaque, isn't it? Is this I don't know what we called them. Is this one of the things that you pushed around in your yes, potter's room? Yes, yes. Wow. And if, I'm, if I'm up for thievery, I shall blame you. <laughs> so you should. I'll tell you what. Well, if I am up for thievery, I'll say, you must send me to New Zealand. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> How's that sound? That's, that's amazing, look. Would this signify one plane or would this signify one squadron? Just one plot. One, one plot. plot of that particular raid. Wow. And a plot means one plane? Oh no, it could be a whole lot. Right. Might be 200. Amazing. But it, they would have given us a number and the n number, the estimated number in the raid and mm. where they were. And mm -hmm. We would just plot them straight on the table, mm -hmm. changing the colours every five minutes so the controller had an up to date knowledge of how old the plots were. As, as they were attacking the Germans or vice versa. They, you get the odd swear word coming over. What did they say? Tally ho. Mm. <laughs> but then again, I can remember talking to these, uh, uh, what are they called? The ones who were around the coast. I was a radar operator, secret. I was an operator. I watched the planes. I used to tell the girl, on the plotting table, where the planes were, with the with the with the mechanics we had on the on the radar station, we could find the direction, the height, and the, and and what kind of a plane it was. And then we used to tell them. You're on my radar. Oh, am I? Thank you very much. I keep tuning into you. <laughs> but once war had been declared, it was clear that serious fighting was going to come and so opportunities for practice were there. So that by the time May came of 1940, Keith Park had had a reasonable go at preparing himself and preparing fighter command under Dowding's instructions for the battle that was to come. And he played a, a leading part that doesn't get too much publicity in the evacuation of about 340,000 men from Dunkirk. He helped very greatly there. Certainly the little ships were wonderful, but they did provide as much air defence as possible. But then of course we come to June and battles in the channel, over the channel, in which um, Park really made his name. And then the actual battle begins seriously in July of 1940 and goes on for the rest of the summer. Dowdick's whole strategy was not about winning the Battle of Britain, it was about not losing it. He realised that the Germans would not invade, providing there was still an air force to deny them air superiority and keep their own navy from crossing the channel. Uh, and so he was never attempting to put enough aircraft in the air to beat the Germans in a, in a mass battle. He was just always wanted to keep the air force in being. And it became something of a gallows humour joke apparently amongst the Luftwaffe air crew who had to come over to the southeast of England and, and say as, as the battle commenced, look, there they come again, those last ten Spitfires. And, and I think Dowding de devised that strategy with Keith Park 
Keith Park uh, implemented that strategy. It needed somebody on the ground to take our by our decisions. And then, uh, in probably one of the most shameful episodes, I think, in terms of the way commanders retreated after battles, uh, Churchill allowed them both to be ca cast aside with Dowding retired, and Sir Keith sent off to train to run training command. Uh, and so, as a result, he never received the recognition uh, that he deserved. And he was the type of character, I think, who didn't protest with that kind of thing. He did his job, and he did it quietly, and uh, didn't expect a particular recognition for it. But Park, along with his boss, Lord Dowding, fell victim to Whitehall intrigue and was shunted aside soon after the battle. Ah, Whitehall intrigue. That's where the trouble was with Bader, Douglas Bader and, and uh, Lee Murray. They wanted the big wings. Park sent up the squadrons individually. Which, you know, if you'd had 36 fighters, all in the air at once, you'd have lost half of them, wouldn't you? Mm. I would think, being an amateur, but... Uh... What's your understanding of the significance of the statue to commemorate Sir Keith Park? Guild complex, I think. <laughs> <laughs> because I think um, people have been on about this for quite a while, you know. Why has he never been recognised? Now the uh, New Zealand government's got onto it, hasn't they? All the MPs have written to uh, to London. So why does it take them seventy years to do it? I can't understand that. So I I think it's probably a guilty conflict. Okay. Don't you? I slightly I, a little bit anyway. You might think that. I'm afraid I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <clears throat> well, somebody's seen sense, let's put it that way. But when we found out that it was all definitely going ahead, oh, you know, one of the fam fantastic moments. We've, we've been very fortunate to do some incredible projects over the years and, um, and work with some amazing people. The sculpture speaks for itself. Um, Les, as an artist, as a great uh, British uh, artist, speaks for his, himself, and so it was a given. We just felt very blessed that we would be invited at all. But this, without doubt, is the single greatest uh, uh, um, thing that we've been involved in at a sort of character building, uh, historic, uh, worthy effort, uh, and uh, it ma has made our crew feel very. Um, very thrilled to have uh, got involved in this. Well, Richard, thanks very much for giving us a glimpse into Wet as well. Cool. And Terry, many congratulations for the wonderful work of the Keith Park Memorial Campaign. But, uh, I suppose we can say now with this uh, forthcoming statue in the, on the 4th Pens in Trafalgar Square, better late than never. Mm -hmm. Wellington had to withstand the strain of battle at Waterloo, riding up and down the line for about five hours on one day. Park had to stand the strain of battle for about five months. So if the British Army has Wellington, I would say the Air Force has Keith Park. So, uh, it's still, it's finished, but it's closely under wraps. None of the public are seeing it yet. No. But you've had the first viewing. Uh, yes, it's, uh, I'm trying to find the right word is difficult. It's a very striking statue. I think it'll make a very big impact on people. Uh, uh, not simply because of its size, although that is uh, quite a, an important part of it, but uh, Les Johnson's sculpture, I think, as you, you heard from Richard, is uh, extraordinary. And and, uh, and what Wet has done with it to turn it into the, the finished article is just about as extraordinary as well. And what they can do is, uh, is really quite amazing. And um, everybody's going to see it in Trafalgar Square on the 4th of November. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to watching uh, a member of the Park family and one of the veterans unveil that statue for us. Fantastic. Okay, thank you very much.